Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this baby mammoth, which was designed by me, but it is based off Zimmy's big mammoth. So if you saw on my channel a couple days ago, I posted a mammoth tutorial for Zimmy, and it's for this very, oh god, we need to zoom out, hold up. Okay. It's for this very big mammoth, but, um, because it was a little band heavy and I kind of just wanted to make a baby one, I made a smaller one, so... Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the smaller guy, and I think it's super cute if you already have the big mammoth to maybe make the small one, because then, like, a baby mammoth, yeah. But, so this is my, th this design is actually technically a variation of Zimmy's design, because I just made it smaller. But she was nice enough to let me make a tutorial for it, so, yeah, so, I made this. And it is literally exactly the same as Zimmy's, just smaller. Like, it's it, the exact same thing. Um, so band-wise, because this guy was, I believe, was he 969 bands? This one's 400 and... It's 447 bands. So it's about half of the bands. Um, he's still a little band-heavy, but that's just because whenever you make anything fluffy, it's going to take a lot of bands. Like, it just, it's just what happens. Uh, also, my, my, my math may have been a little wrong, because I'm like, 400, that's a lot, but... Yeah, maybe my mass wrong, or maybe it takes 400. Either way, it's around there, so I'd say like 400-ish bands. Um, I do think it's worth it, because I really, I really love this baby mammoth, but yeah. So thank you, Zimmy, for letting me make a tutorial for this one as well, because I know it's a variation, and then, yeah, there's that whole thing. But yeah, thank you. But yeah, so, yeah. So if you want to see this tutorial, um, I posted it a few days ago, so it's like the first video, one of the first videos on my channel, so you can make the big mammoth if you want. But like I said, in this one, I'm going to be showing you how to make these guys. Also, I tried to make this guy with smaller eyes just to see how it looked. And I kind of like the bigger eyes better. But yeah. So, for today's tutorial, I'm going to be using two different shades of brown for the whole mammoth. Just so he looks like an actual mammoth. Also, this design is pretty easy as well. So, it's not like super hard. Um, I think it's an easier design. So, yeah. But I think that's all I had to say about this. So, we're going to get into it. Um... Of course, to make this guy, you're going to need some stuffing. I actually didn't bring stuffing, so I'm going to have to get stuffing at some point, but you're going to want some stuffing. Um, you're going to need a hook, of course, and a C-clip to mark your rows, or just whatever you need to mark your rows. Um, it doesn't really matter what you use. What the heck? Where'd my C-clip go? Uh, oh, they're right here. So yeah, you just need something to mark your rows. And I think that's it. And then you're just going to want to get whatever band color you want for your mammoth. Like I said, I'll be using some browns today. So I think we're going to get started. Um, yeah. So I already made some legs and stuff off camera just because I didn't want the tutorial to be ridiculously long. So I'm going to show you how to make one of the legs and then you'll pause the video and make the other three. So yeah, I'm going to show you how to make a leg first. And I'm picking a band. I don't know why I never pick up bands before I turn on the camera but picking up bands. Okay. So, for the legs, where do I have the legs? Okay, so we're going to start by, let me move this out of the way. So we are going to start, oh, let me bring this back down, hold up. Adjustments, um, so we are going to start by wrapping a band three times around our hook. So one, two, three. And then once we wrap a band three times around our hook, we're going to be putting um, six stitches in this cap band. So you're, if you already know how to do that, you're going to want to do that. But if not, I'll explain it to you. Hmm. I heard a weird noise and I was like, what the heck is that? But I don't know. But yeah. But now all you're going to do is you're going to pull a ba this band through the whole cap band. Uh, not like that. But you're going to pull the band through the whole cap band. Put both ends back on your hook. And then you're going to push the back loop over the front loop. Like that. And then we're going to go back into the cap band. So the whole cap band. We're going to pull the band through just the cap band. Put both ends back on your hook. And then push the back loop over the front loop. And then you're going to push this loop from last time over as well. Yeah. And then we're going to do the same thing four more times. So we're going to go into the cap band. You're going to pull a band through the whole cap band. Put both ends back on your hook. And then you're just going to... You're just going to push the back one over the front one. 
And then you'll push the loop from last time over. And we're just going to do the exact same thing we just did three more times. So you go through the cap band, both ends back on, back one over the front one, and then the loop from last time over. Let me do that two more times. And one. And then two. And now, instead of going into the cap band, once you, once you, um, well, first we're going to make sure we have six loops. So, to make sure we have six loops, we're going to start by counting the one on your our hook. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, it's easy for me to tell I have six as well because I use different colors, so they're easy to count. But you're always going to want to make sure you don't accidentally count this, um, this band. But yeah. And then once you made sure you have six loops, instead of going into the cap band, you're going to go into the very first loop. You're going to do the same, basically the same thing. So you pull it through the loop, both ends back on your hook, back one over the front one, and then you push the loop from last time over. Like that. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing three rows normal. So we're just doing single stitches all the way around um, until we get back to the C-clip. But we're going to do that for three rows. And I think I'll stay on with you to do the first row, and then I'll go off to do the other two. But it's pretty simple. Basically, we're just going to keep doing the same thing we just did. So you go through the next loop. Pull the band. Oops. Wrong color. Um, yeah. Pull a band through the whole thing. Push the back one over the front one. Yeah, and we're just doing one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. Uh, also, I just want to say if you're struggling with this and you're having problems making the magic ring or anything, I do have a Luma Gurmy Basics video that should help you out because I go a lot slower in that video. Um, in this video, I kind of assume you know what I'm doing. For, like, kind of the most part. But yeah. And then once you get back to the C-clip, you're going to make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it, and then you're going to move the C-clip up onto this band. Like that. And then now if you can around, you should still have six loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my god. The work group chat is just like so much talking. <laughs> okay. But yeah. So I'm going to do it one more time. But basically you're just putting one stitch in every loop until you get back to the C-clip. And like I said, you do this for three rows. Um, so this is my second row. So I would have to do one more after this one. And yeah. It's pretty quick to go around because it's small. And once you get to the C-clip, you just make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it. And you move it up. So like that. Um, I'm going to go off camera to do the last row, but you're going to want to do what we just did one more time. So you have three rows in total. Um, and yeah. Okay, so once you did three rows in total, it should be looking something like this. So, yup. And so basically, if you stayed on and did the two rows with me, you only had to do one more. But if you went off right away, we did three in total. Um, but once you finish them, all you're going to do is you're going to go into the next stitch, or the next loop. And then you're just going to pull the band through everything on your hook. Put both ends back on. And then push the back one over the front one. And you're going to pull it sort of tight, but not super tight. Because we're going to want to undo this later. Like that. And like I said, you're going to want to make... Um, how many legs? Uh, four legs total. So you're going to want to pause here and do three more. Um, I already made the rest of mine, so I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, we're good. I thought one was taller, but no, they're, they're all the right size. Okay. So I guess I'll show you how to do the ears next. Um, the ears are also pretty easy. Um, yeah. So for the ears, like I said, <laughs> I already made one, so I'm just gonna make one more. But we're gonna do the same kind of thing. We're gonna wrap a band three times around our hook. And then we're gonna put five stitches in this cap band. So it's the exact same thing we did last time, but we're gonna put one less stitch. So once again, to start it, you pull a band through the cap band, put both ends back on, push the back one over the front one, 
Then you go back into the cab band. You pull the band through just the cab band. Put the back one over the front one, and then put the loop from the last time over. And we're going to want to do the exact thing we just did four, no, three more times. So we have five loops in total, so... One, three... Four... And five... So once you want to count around to make sure you have five... You're just going to start by counting the one in your hook, so you're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And always make sure you don't accidentally count that weird loop, because it's not a loop. Yeah, I hope you can kind of see this. This one is the one I'm talking about. Don't count it. Um, yeah. But once you've made sure you have five, um, instead of going back into the cap band, once again, we'll go into the very first loop. And we'll just make a stitch on that loop. And then we'll be putting a C-clip on this band. Like that. So now we're going to be increasing everything. And we haven't increased um, up to this point. So I'm going to show you what it increases. But basically, instead of putting one stitch in each loop, we're going to be putting two. So, yeah. So this one already has one in it, but like I said, we're increasing everything, so we have to go back into this loop, and we're going to make another stitch. And that's an increase. So basically all an increase is, is you just go in, you make one stitch, right? And then you go back in, and you do another stitch, and that's an increase. And we just keep doing this all the way around. I don't know why, but when I said around, I feel like I sounded like such like a text in there. Like, ew. But, yeah. So we're just going to finish increasing everything. We're almost there. And then once you get to the C-clip once again, you'll just make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it. And at this point, you can just take it out because we're done. Um, but after that last row, you should you should have 10 loops. So if you count around, you should have 10. We always start by counting the one on our hook. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So once you've made sure you have 10, you'll just go into the next loop. And once again, you'll pull a band through everything on your hook. Put the back one over the front one and then pull sort of tight. But not super tight, like that. So, like I said, you're gonna want to make you're gonna want to make two ears. So you're gonna want to pause the video after this bit and go make another ear. So next, I'll show you how to do the tusks, which are actually um, really really simple. So for the tusks, um, okay. All you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap a band four times around your hook. And then you're going to double the cap band. Not the cap band. You're just going to double a band. I don't even know what I'm saying. And then you're going to slide the cap band onto that doubled band. And then you put both ends back on. We're going to do that again. So you're going to double a band. You're going to slide everything on your hook onto that band. And then put both ends back on your hook. And then we're going to want to take a band that's our mammoth color. And we're going to pull it through everything on our hook. And then we can just set this aside. As long as you don't pull on it, this should stay. And we're going to want to make one more of these. So all it is is a cat band wrapped around your hook four times. And then you chain on two doubled bands. Uh, I actually forgot to make the other tusks, so I'm just doing it right now. But luckily tusks are, tusks are super quick. Yeah. And then we'll just set it aside. Okay, so uh, the last things we need to make are I'm sorry, I got lost on my pattern. Well, I didn't get lost. I know what I'm doing, but yeah. So I guess I'll show you how to make the tail next. And for the tail, what you're going to want to do first is you're going to want to get 
you're going to want to double three bands on your hook, so you're just going to wrap them twice. Three bands. And then you're going to get another band, and we're going to double it. We're going to pull everything that's on our hook onto this band. Put both ends back on our hook. And now we're just going to want to chain up four more. So it's like a chain of five in total with the doubled bands. We're just going to chain up four more. So this is two. So this is the first chain. So it's one, two, three, and then four. And then five. So once you chain up five, all you're going to do is you're going to take a band that is your mammoth color, you're going to pull it through everything on your hook, and then you'll just set this aside. And as long as you don't pull on it, it should stay. So the very last thing we need to do um, before we get into making our mammoth body is we are just going to be making the trunk. And the trunk is a little trickier because it is very tight, as well as I do some... Um, weirder stitches to get it to curve nicely. Well, not weirder stitches, it's just we decrease a couple times. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna pick up some bands really quick. You know, I don't know if I said it at the start of this tutorial, but this is technically supposed to be a baby mammoth design, but that's kind of why I made the tusks like very short, because he's like a baby. But I know that the title of this video is not gonna say baby mammoth because, <laughs> um, if you put baby in your YouTube titles, it'll turn off your comments. I don't know why. But yeah. Anyways, so to start the trunk, what we're going to do is we're going to triple a cat band on our hook again. So one, two, three. And then we're going to be putting four stitches in this cat band. And I'm not going to explain this too much because we've already done a bunch of cat bands. So you're just going to put four stitches in this. Three, and then four, and then you're just going to count backwards to make sure you have four loops, so one, two, three, four, and then we're going to go into the first loop, pull the band through, put the back one over the front one, and then we're just going to put a C-clip on this loop. Like that. And now we're just going to do one row around normal, which basically means we're just doing single stitches all the way around. Putting one stitch in each loop until we get back to the C-clip. I need more bands. Okay. Um. And then once you get to the C-clip, you'll just move it up. Like that. So if you count around, we should still have four. So one, two, three, four. And then now what we're going to do is a little bit interesting. Because, so then, we're going to basically do the same thing for two rows, but uh, I can get where it's a little confusing. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to do a decrease, and then we're going to do an increase. So the next stitch, we're going to do a decrease, and it's kind of hard to show you because it's very tight. But you're going to grab the front part of one loop, and the back part of the next loop, and then you'll just make a stitch on this. And it's really tight and hard to see, but this is the next loop right here. And we're going to do an increase on this one. So one. And two. And then we should be back at the C-clip. So we're just going to do a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And we'll move the C-clip up. So now if you count around, you'll still be at four loops. One, two, three, four. Um, I just do that so that way it kind of curves nicer. I notice it does if you put decreases right there. Um, so yeah. 
So we're going to do the exact same thing again. So the very next stitch we do is going to be decrease. And then the stitch after that one will be an increase. So one. And then two. I'm sorry if my fingers are getting in the way. It's just so tight. And then we should be at the C clip. So we'll move. We'll make a stitch on the band that has a C clip on it. And we can move it up or we can take it out. I'm just going to take it out. But if you can around, you should still be at four loops. So one, two, three, four. And then instead of, well, now we're just going to tie it off like we did before. So we'll just go into the next loop. Pull a band through everything on your hook. Put both ends back on. Put the back one over the front one and pull sort of tight. Like that. And then you're just going to want to bend your trunk in the way, like in the direction where the decreases are. So I can tell I decreased right here. So you can just bend your trunk that way. And then you'll have a nice bended trunk. So I think the trunk's like one of the hardest things just because it's so tight. But now we're going to get started on the body. Okay, so like I said, we're going to start on the body. Um, Actually, no, not the body. We do the head first, right? I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what I'm doing. I don't know. <laughs> Why was that sarcastic? Um, Yeah. I'm just picking up bands, as always. So many bands to pick up. But yeah. Okay. So to start, we're going to start with a tripled cat band, just like all the other things. And then... This time, the only thing that's different is we are going to be adding fluff onto all these bands. So basically, we're going to be adding doubled bands onto all of them so he looks all fluffy. Um, so you're going to want to double the band. So you're going to wrap it twice around your hook. Wait, no. Oh, wait. We can't do this yet. Ignore that. Um, but you're just going to want to pull a band through like you normally would and then put the back one over the front one. And then basically what I usually do is I'll just take this off my hook for a second, double a band on my hook, and then slide it on. And I just do it like that for the first one. I don't know why. It just confuses me otherwise. Um, but basically before we do every stitch from now until I tell you to stop, which will be in a couple rows, um, you're just going to double a band on your hook before you do any stitch, just so it looks fluffy. So you'll double a band on your hook, and you'll go back into the cat band, and you'll just make a stitch. Uh, I don't know if I already said this, but we're doing five stitches, so I have to do three more. But just remember to always double a band on your hook before you do the stitch. Like that. I'm really hoping this guy looks cute. I don't know if I, he'll look cute in brown, but I think he will. Uh, yeah. So this one should be five. So just to make sure I have five, once again, I'll count backwards. So one, two, three, four, and then five. I, can, I know five's right here. It's kind of hard to count because of all the... Um, wrapped bands but you can also kind of just look in the center and see if you have five so like I have one two three four five but once you've made sure you have five you're going to want to go into the first loop which should be right here and this band will be weird just make sure to push it down and then go into that band make sure to remember to double the band on your hook first and I, I, I'm trying to not be confusing but basically the wrap band is kind of going to be floppy on this one, but so you're just going to want to push it down. And then go over it and into the loop. But you'll just make a stitch. And we're still adding fluff bands. And then you'll put the seat up on this band. Like that. 
So now what we're going to be doing for this next row is we're going to be increasing everything. So every single stitch we do is going to be an increase. And just like before, basically what it increases is you put two stitches in each loop until we get back to the C-clip. So, yeah. So we're just going to be doing two stitches in every loop until we get to the C-clip. Because that's what an increase is, basically. So you just go into the loop, but you do one, and then you'll double, and then you go back in and you do another one. And that's an increase. And we just keep doing these all the way around. I'm not explaining this too much because I think you know what an increase is, because we already did them. So yeah. I have to keep picking up bands because I forgot what you were doing on the fluff bands and whenever you do those you're going to want to put like, I don't know, like two of one band on your finger. This has nothing to do with how I'm looming, it's just how I grab the bands because I always have them on my finger like this. Also, I heard thunder. That's not good. My poor little brother's hoping that he has his <laughs> baseball game tonight because he, he plays baseball and they keep getting cancelled because it's been raining so much, so... That's not good. That it's thundering because that means it might rain, and if it rains, his game's pretty much cancelled. So, yeah. Yep. Okay. Almost back. Okay, and then once you get back to the C-clip, you're just going to make a stitch on the band that has the C-clip on it, and move it up, like that. So if you count around now, you should have 10 loops, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now we're going to stop adding the fluff bands for the head, That's that's it. And now we're just going to be um, picking up bands. Oh my god, I'm so worried I'm going to run out of brown. I don't have that much left. That's not good. I might need to get more brown. If I have more brown, I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, but we're going to be doing three rows normal now. So we're just going to be putting one stitch in every loop. And like I said, we're done with the fluff band. So now we're just going to be doing um, stitches without the double band on them, basically. Just no fluff, you know. And I'm picking up bands again. My tutorials would probably be like 10 minutes, not 10 minutes shorter, like 5 minutes shorter if I cut out when I pick up bands. But I don't know if you know this, but I do, like, I shoot my tutorials all in one go. I don't, like, cut stuff out or edit them. I just do it all in one go and hope for the best. <laughs> But yeah, so we're just going to be doing three rows in total normal. I'll stay with you to do the first one, and then I'll go off camera. But we're just going to be putting one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. So, yeah, that's all we're doing. You know, I've kind of been liking the rain, though, because it's been raining so much. Probably the past month, actually. The whole month, yeah. And... Well, since, yeah, about a month. And it's been good because I work, it's been slow, which is not good for my dad because if you don't know, I work at my dad's ice cream shop. And his business has been slow, but I kind of like it because I don't have to work as much. So, I've been liking the rain, but definitely my little brother has not because all his sports get canceled. But yeah. And then once you get back to the C-clip, you're just going to move it up. And then you'll just count around and make sure you still have 10 loops. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And like I said, we don't add any more fluff bands, so yeah. So I'm going to go off camera and do the other two rows, and then I'll come back and show you what to do next. Okay, so I just finished doing the three rows in total. So if you stayed on camera and did the one with me, then you only had to do two more. Um, and it looks something like this, and we're actually... 
Almost done with the head. I'm checking to see if I have cotton balls. I, I just remembered I forgot to get some. Well, I remembered at the start, and I do have a cotton ball for the head, so we're, we're good. But, um, yeah. Uh, we don't have to stuff it yet, I was just remembering. We'll stuff it after this next step. But now this next row, we're going to be decreasing every third, so... This is one. You're going to count this first loop as the first loop. The first loop. The first stitch. I don't even know what I'm saying. Do I ever know what I'm saying? I've said this twice in this tutorial. I'm just very confusing today. Um, but yeah. So we'll go into the next one. Make a stitch. So we did two single stitches. So that means that the next stitch is going to be a decrease. And once again, what a decrease is, is you basically grab the front part of one loop. And the back part of the next loop. Let me make a stitch. And then once again, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to do two single single stitches, and then we're going to do a decrease. So one, and two. And then this third one's going to be a decrease. So basically what you're going to, the way I like to think of it is you have the next, you're going to be working with the next two loops. I'm just explaining a decrease in more detail in case anyone's wondering what the heck's going on. Um, but basically you'll have your next two loops. You'll grab the inside of one loop and the outside of the next loop, and then you just make a stitch on it, and that's a decrease. So then you're going to go one, hug, so one, two, and then, hold up. And then the last decrease should be on the one that has a C-clip on it, and we're just going to do the decrease, and then we'll move the C-clip up onto this band. So if you count around now, you should have seven loops, I believe. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we're going to want to stuff the head. Like I said, I'm using a cotton ball. You know, I'm lucky I always accidentally leave cotton balls lying around everywhere. Because I totally forgot um, stuffing, but I remembered I had a cotton ball on my desk. I, I don't know why, I actually prefer cotton balls as stuffing for my things. I know a lot of people use polyfill, and polyfill works good as well. I just, sometimes cotton balls, are just they just work nice. Okay, but now what we are going to do is we're just going to decrease everything until it's closed. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. Like I said, every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. And at this point, you can just take the seagull out. Okay, and then when you have the very last decrease up on your hook, Instead of pulling it through just the decrease, you're going to pull it through everything on your hook and then put the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then we'll just hide the tail up into the head. Like that. Like that. And then our head's done. So now what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to attach the trunk and everything to the head. You can do this at the end, but I'm just going to do it right now. So you're going to want to get your ears, your tusks, your eyes. Um, you can use safety eyes or you can just use beads on bands. That's what I do. And if you don't have beads on bands, you can always use a wrap band. So you'll just wrap a band four times around your hook and then pull a band through. And then that works as an eye as well. Um, and then you'll just get your trunk. And we're just going to tie this all onto him. Um, yeah. So like I said, when it, you want to tie these tight but not too tight, it's because the reason is you're just going to want to undo them. Like that. And then you're going to pick where you want the ears. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you put the first one. But you'll just go on the side of the head. Then you'll use that band to tie the ear in. Like that. 
And this one actually looks like it's gonna hold with the one band. I don't need to like fasten the ear down more. Because sometimes I'll put, usually with the ears, I'll just put two bands. So let me show you. Uh, I'm just hiding the tail. But if it still feels like it's a little wobbly to me, the ear, which actually this one actually doesn't. So I'm not gonna do anything. But sometimes all I'll do is I'll just tie down another part of the ear so it's not too wobbly. But I think this one's okay. We're just gonna go onto the other side of the head. We undid do the slip knot again. And this one is kind of more important where you place it because you don't want to place it too far back on accident. But you'll just use this band to tie it in. And when, I know some people ask what I mean by tie it in, but basically you just do a slip knot and then you just pull tight. And then it ties it in. That. And then once you're happy with where the ears are, I'll usually do the trunk next just because this one goes right in the middle of the face. And once again, you'll just undo that slip knot we used to tie it off. And then use this to tie it into the face. And this one I usually will have to use another band to tie it in because it will be a little wobbly. So like that. And I'll just go through another part of the trunk, then part of the mammoth. And I'll just pull a band through everything. Yeah. Not that much through everything. <laughs> See? I'll just tie it in. Usually this one only takes two. And then it'll hold pretty well. Then you just tie the tails in. Um, another hack for the tails if you don't want them, like, you don't want to mind if they stick out a bit is if you pull them up into the hair, because then if they stick out it doesn't matter. But yeah. Happy with where the nose is. And then once I'm happy with where the nose and ears and everything are, I'll just tie the eyes and the tusks in. And the eyes don't have an exact spot. I just try to put them a little bit higher than the trunk. Like right here. I don't know why this man's eyes look bigger than the other dude's eyes. And then we just hide the tails. Oh shoot, it broke. I heard it snap. Shoot. Okay, I'm gonna go fix that real quick. Okay, I, I fixed his eyes. I lost another band. I don't know why when I was tying the eyes in, the brown bands just kept snapping, but... After you tie the eyes in, you're just gonna want to tie the tusk in on either side of the nose. So, or the trunk, I guess. I'm just gonna want to tie them in. Oh god, I don't need to go through that much. I was just trying to go through a little bit. <laughs> so. Right here, yeah. And then you just tie his tusks in. Like that. Gosh, I'm having such a hard time tucking stuff in on camera. It's also blurry. Okay, right here. Just tuck this up into him. <laughs> Okay. And I think that tucked okay. Okay, let me go fix his tusk. Okay, so I finished tux tucking his tusk in. I don't know what happened. It was just tucking weird. Like, I didn't even have to move it. The tail just wasn't tucking right. 
But yeah, so after that you should have a whole mammoth head. Um, but now we're going to do the body. So if you've made the big mammoth already, the body starts exactly the same. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be stitching into this back of the head part. Um, I did change one bit, bit a little bit from Zimmy's, but it's almost the same thing. So I am picking up ants. Also, we're going to be adding fluff again, so yeah. Uh, I'm going to pause to pick up bands. Okay, so I put all the bands on my finger. Also earlier, when I was mentioning about how you want to put your bands on the fing your finger like this when you're doing the fluff, just... If you loom like me, if you don't loom like me, then you're fine. I just... I always do this. Um, but yeah, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to try to make a circle on the back of his head that's going to be his body. And you're going to want to make it eight. So, like, you're going to stitch around on the back of his head eight. So I usually start pretty low on the back of the head. I'm going to stitch in right here. And before you stitch in, you're going to want to double a band on your hook. Because like I said, everything has fluff. And then... You're basically just going to try to make a circle. Uh, I don't really have an exact way of doing this. I'm pretty sure it's come out different each time for each mammoth. It's just you're going to want to make a circle on the back of his head that is eight stitches big. But yeah, I'm pretty sure the circles come out different. Three, two, three. It's hard to really explain what I'm doing because I'm just stitching into the back of his head wherever I feel like I should. Like I said, there's not really exact spots for this. Kind of just got to feel it. <laughs> I'm also kind of counting in my head so I know how many stitches I have to do. Okay, that should have been eight stitches. So you're just going to count backwards to make sure you have eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then once you know you have eight, Instead of stitching in him, you're going to stitch into the first stitch. And then this is where your C-clip will go. Okay, so we just finished stitching into the head um, eight times or whatever. And now what we're going to be doing this, nec this next row is we are going to be increasing every other stitch. Um... So you guys don't know this because you obviously won't see the footage, but I just messed up twice on this part. Uh, I had the instructions written down wrong, but now I fixed them. So that's fun. <laughs> I would have been done filming by now, but I accidentally messed up twice, so that's my bad. But hopefully this time is the time. But yeah, okay. So like I said, we're increasing every other, so this first one, we don't... This is the first one, so in the next one we'll do an increase. So we'll put two stitches in this one. And then the next one will be a single stitch. And then we'll do an increase again. And we just keep alternating doing this. We're just increasing and then doing a single stitch. Then we increase. Need more bands. Okay. So we're just gonna 
keep going all the way around. Increasing every other. And then once you get to the C-clip, you'll just make a stitch on the loop that has the C-clip on it. And we'll move it up. So that after that last row, you should be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You should be at 12 loops. Um, yeah. So now it's going to get a bit repetitive. So we are going to be doing five rows. Um, five rows. Normal, we're just going to be doing single stitches all the way around. And at the end of each of these rows, you should still be at 12 loops. So, yeah. So I'm going to stay with you to do the first one, and then I'm going to go and do the other four off camera. So, like I said, we're just doing single stitches all the way around. Just doing single stitches. So yeah, like I mentioned at the start, I had to messed up twice. Um, I wrote increase everything instead of increase every other, and then I was trying to figure out what I did wrong, and then I was like, oh, I'll just figure it out on camera. It did not work out. Um, so I'm just refilming now. <laughs> uh, yeah, that happens sometimes with tutorials. I write down the wrong stuff, and then I'll be like, oh, I'll fix it. I do not fix it ever on the pattern. But, yeah. but this time I'm pretty sure I have it right. So yeah. Also, so basically if I was talking about anything in the last clip and I'm not continuing whatever the heck I was talking about, I totally forgot whatever the heck it was. But yeah. Because I know I was talking about things, but I don't remember what. Yeah. So we're just going around. We're almost back at the C clip. Okay, and then once you get back to the C clip, you're just gonna make a stitch on the band that has a C clip on it, and you're gonna move the C clip up onto the band that's on your hook. Like that, and then if you can run, you should still be at 12 loops. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And like I said, we're going to be doing um, five rows total, so I did one with you on camera, so if you did that one with me, you just have to go off camera, well not off camera, like pause the tutorial and do four more. Uh, I'm going to go do the other four, and then I'll come back and show you how to finish the mammoth up. Okay, so I just finished the five rows, and it looks something like this, about right here. And yeah, so now I'm going to show you how to... Uh, now I'm going to show you how to close it up, and um, yeah, I'm really kind of excited to be done with this tutorial because I'm kind of starving. Um, yeah, this tutorial took a little longer to film than I was thinking because I messed up those two times, and now I'm starving. I'm ready to go eat lunch. Um, yeah. Making sure it's focused. Okay. So this next row we're going to be decreasing every third. So that means every um, third stitch is going to be a decrease. So it's going to be two singles and then a decrease. And yeah. Also, I'm sorry if you can hear my family. All of a sudden they started being really loud. I usually warn them kind of when I'm filming. Like, don't be ridiculously loud. Because I have a very loud family. But yeah. So the one with the C-clip on it is the first one. This one is the second one. And then the next one will be the third one, so we'll do a decrease. So remember, you here with the front part of the first loop and the back part of the next loop, and then you just make a stitch. I just keep doing this. So you just do one, 
two. And then the third stitch again will be a decrease. So you grab the front part of one loop, back part of the next loop, and make a stitch. So one, two, and then this last one will be a decrease. And then I'm going to kind of keep talking because I can hear the music in the living room and I don't want you guys to hear it because it's Taylor Swift, which means it's copyrighted. So I think I'm going to have to talk nonstop. But after that, you should just make a stitch on the metal that has a C-clip on it and move it up. And right now is when you're going to want to stuff it. So I have some questionable stuffing decisions, but I'm too lazy to go get more. Uh, I have a cotton ball and then a tiny bit of polyfill, but I think it should be enough to fill them up. So yeah, you can stuff him now. And you can take the hook out. Uh, the C-clip should hold it as long as you don't really pull on it. It should be okay. Yeah. Yeah, this will fill him up. I have a cotton ball and then a tiny bit of polyfill. So that should do it. Ta-da. Like that. Actually, I think that's slightly too much stuffing. Can take out a little bit. Like that. And then you'll just stick your hook back in. And if you ever get confused on which way to stick your hook back in, you can kind of see that all the loops are going like this, which means your hook would go in this way. Just a tip. Because see, I can see all my loops. So my hook goes pointing that way. Yeah. Okay, but now we're going to finish closing this guy up. Uh, also, after the last row, if you count around, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you should have nine loops. And now we're going to decrease every other. So every other stitch we do is going to be a decrease. So we're going to do a single stitch, a decrease, a single stitch, a decrease. Until it's... Until we get to the C-clip. You know, I really do love filming tutorials, though. I just thought of this because I'm like, eh, you know. I don't know, just random thought. I'm having fun filming this even though I'm kind of starving. <laughs> I guess that was my thought. I really need some food. But we're almost done, so we're good. I should be done in like the next 15 minutes. So, we're good. Okay. So like I said, we're decreasing every other. So this first stitch is a single stitch, so the next one will be a decrease. And we're still adding fluff. Oh, so many people are texting me. Oh my god, I'm so popular. <laughs> Not really, it's my mother. Uh, but yeah. And then after you do a decrease, you'll do a single stitch. And then you'll do a decrease again. And then we just keep alternating, doing a decrease, and then doing a single stitch until we get back to the C-clip. And then a decrease. Oh, I forgot to add the fluff band, oopsie. And then there'll just be a single stitch on the C-clip. And at this point you can just remove the C-clip. But if we count around, you should be at six loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And now we're just going to decrease everything until it's closed. And we're also going to stop adding the fluff bands. So no more fluff bands from here until it's closed. So you're just going to decrease absolutely everything until it's closed. And like I said, we're not adding fluff bands anymore. We're just decreasing. And then once you have the last decrease up on your hook, you're going to pull a band through everything on your hook, put the both ends back on, push the back one over the front one, and pull really tight. Well, not really tight, but like tight enough where it won't come loose. And then you're going to hide your tail into your design. And 
And that's it. We have the body. So now all we need to do is attach the legs and the tail. Um, this is really easy. I don't know. To me, the attaching the legs on this design is super easy. So usually I'll attach the tail first. Uh, the only thing is you're going to want to make sure you don't accidentally attach anything crookedly. So you're going to want to look at it and then tail like goes straight back. So I'm going to just check to make sure I'm putting it in the right spot. Because I always accidentally um, put things crooked whenever I put things on on camera. I, I don't know why. It's sometimes it's just so hard to see the whole creation. That it's like I almost always put stuff on crooked whenever I put stuff on on camera. It's just what happens. Okay, like that. So here's a tail. And then the legs are pretty easy. So you'll undo that first, the band we tied off, so we can use it to tie into the mammoth. So uh, You're just going to want to pick a spot, and you're going to want to make sure it won't be crooked. Um, okay, I'm just looking to see where I want to add it off camera, because I don't want to accidentally put it in crooked. But I think we're going to go like right here. And then it's kind of, you're going to kind of want to get another part of the leg, like on the top here. And you're going to want to tie it in again. A little bit more this way. Like that. And usually I only have to tie them two times. Sometimes you have to tie them three, but usually two does it. And I wouldn't recommend hiding any of the tails in until you've done all the legs and you're happy with it, where they all are, and then just tie the tail, like hide the tails in. But yeah, so we're just gonna keep doing this with all the legs. I'll undo that band we tied off, and I'll use it to tie into my mammoth. And then I'll go on like the other half of the leg usually, get part of it, and then tie it in again, like. Right here. Look at that. And you're just going to want to make sure your legs are straight. Um, mine look pretty good. Uh, I think it was on this guy. His legs are a little crooked to his body. Um, so that's just the most important part about the legs is just make sure you're putting them on straight. But yeah, you'll just untie this. And then just pick a spot where to put the leg. It's not a really exact spot, and that's why it's kind of hard to explain to you guys. I'm just staying on camera so you can see what I'm doing, but... Yeah, we're just tying the legs in. I feel like the legs are pretty forgiving about where you put them. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter too much. But yeah. Oh man, I don't know why all my bands are snapping. That sucks. I'm gonna go fix this. Okay, I fixed the snap band. Has anyone been having problems that Rainbow Loon's bands seem to be snapping more? Because I, when I was making the other big mammoth, um, let me get him. This guy, one of the stitches I did in the middle just snapped randomly while I was making it. Like, it was not like a band I was using to tie, it was one of the stitches I did earlier. And I was like, what the heck? So I had to end up tying it shut, and I was like, it's so weird, I've never had that problem. But I had that problem the other day, so... I don't know. I've just been having problems that they occasionally snap more. Okay. This should be the last one. Okay, and then before I hide all the tails in, I'm just going to look at him and make sure I like where his legs are, and I do, so I'm just going to tuck everything in. And luckily, because he's fluffy, as long as you just kind of like pull it someone in, even if it sticks out, it doesn't matter because it just looks like it's part of the fluff, which is nice because there's a few tail bands to hide in. Yeah, 
Yeah. I hear my dad and my dad and my little brother playing ping pong. I just hear him smacking it back and forth. Yeah. Yep, yeah, but I think we're gonna be done. I think it's funny because someone told me to make a brown mammoth. I don't think this is the brown mammoth they had in mind, but it's the brown mammoth I made because I didn't I didn't have enough of just one color of brown. So he's two different colors and it's kind of cute. Anyways, I think that is it for the tutorial. So if you make a mammoth, oh, he has a piece of floss stuck to him. So if you make a mammoth, definitely tag me. I would love to see how your tiny ones turn out. Um, I'm also going to put, well, you'll see it in the end screen. I'm going to link Zimmy's tutorial for the bigger mammoth. So if you want to make a big mammoth and a baby mammoth, you can do that. I think that's super fun. Um, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more tutorials. Because uh, it's summer, I'm going to be trying to put out more tutorials more often. And then in the fall, I might slow down a bit again. But for the summer, I'm going to try to put out more tutorials, so I definitely think you should subscribe if you want to see more new things and things. Um, and yeah. Also, subscribing is a good idea because I post on the community tab a lot and when I can't make videos and stuff. So if you want to keep up with me, that's a good way to keep up with me. Um, and yeah. So I think that's it. Uh, I have my Instagram and everything in the description in case you want to follow me on there. And yeah, I think that's it. I hope your bandwidth turned out okay. But I think that is it for this video. I'm gonna go get food because I'm really hungry. So, yeah. <laughs> Bye.